There's some recovery data like on it where in general subjective recovery scores, soreness, those sorts of things seems to just be better if you use the sauna. If heat exposure and saunas turn out to magnify the growth response, Scott, we're turning the gym up to 90. You already do, man. Shut up. <laughs> what is the effect of the sauna and heat exposure on muscle growth? Because cold exposure, we already know, fucks that shit up. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong, but cold uh, exposure, it's not pretty, great. Pretty clear for like hypertrophy, man, at this point. Like it, Especially it, after training. Right, right. Proximal to the resistance training session, it just doesn't look good. Yeah. So do not cold plunge after you weight train at the same like gym or whatever. If you want to, yeah, grow muscle right, what and get stronger. What the fuck are you training anyway? Right, exactly. <laughs> you list every benefit of resistance training. Like, well, unless you're resistance training for your soul <laughs> only. Um, what about the sauna, bro? What about heat? Yeah, it is an, it, it's an interesting, well, first off, I, I'm surprised by the lack of evidence. There's not, there's barely any evidence. So not a ton of people are doing the studies on like, if we put people in saunas after training versus not, how mm -hmm. much more jacked or less mm -hmm. jacked they get. Yeah. So I guess the first disclaimer is like, we don't have good, like longitudinal, well-powered, sure. good research on it. What about from what we do have? What yeah. can we surmise? And I think this is important where it's like, well, let's look at uh, established phenomena. And one, it's like in, particularly in Finland. Uh, they love the saunas. They do. And when you compare sauna users more than, you know, four times a week seems to be you know, three or four times a week, 20 minutes ish hot though, like 170 uncomfortable. Yeah. To like maybe as high as like 190. What the fuck? Um, All right. It's hot. Uh, those individuals to individuals who don't use the sauna in terms of like all cause mortality risk, yeah. I mean, it's like 40, 50% different. I don't like that. Um, agglomeration of studies and the inference at all because really? I don't because okay. it's very difficult to parse yeah, that's health, fair. health uh, practices aside. Mm -hmm. You could just be screening for conscientiousness at that point. We that's already know conscientious very, people live fair. much longer because they give a shit about everything. Mm -hmm. And in uh, some cultures, the sauna attendance is a thing that people do when they're very health conscious. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, is a lot it of really, stuff, yeah, is it really the, the sauna? Is it that's the doing sauna it, or right? is it, yeah, a hundred percent? Sure. Um, it, it, so, like, you know, people who, when they're in the second grade, have all their colored pencils lined up by color on their desk orderly, make more money when they grow up. But is it because of the colored pencils? No, it's just because they were that person that organized systems I like around them. Pencils. They're nice. I hated them and I can never organize shit. That's why I'm dirt poor. Um, <laughs> So, I, okay, so, but, but, but as a scientifically minded person, I have to say the research is very interesting and it could very well be that something about the sauna enhances longevity. But we also know that things that enhance longevity, like caloric restriction and mm -hmm. like endurance training are dog shit for muscle growth. So do we have to be suspicious now that the sauna is bad for muscle growth on mechanistic grounds? Then again, I saw a recent one study that illustrated that exposure to heat did trigger some hypertrophic mechanisms. What well, do you make of that? We're working with a, like I say, that was the first disclosure, right? Is like already in a limited body of evidence, there's limitations of, I mean, any like all cause mortality research, we, we there's so many potential confounders. Sure. I think there, are, there's some really well controlled things that we've learned though, like smoking is not going to be health promoting. Yeah, um, the, the all, Yeah, the all-cause mortality risk data on that, I feel pretty confident. Pretty confident, yeah. Um, not so much with the sauna. Right. Um, okay. Let's, let's, and just to be really clear, if you compare the, the research on cold plunging after a resistance training session, I mean, it's consistent, right, from acute measures of muscle protein synthesis to, like, using MRI to look at muscle volume after weeks of doing it. You know, we're talking like 40, 50 degree water for like as little as 10 minutes after a session can really knock that hypertrophy response down. Down substantially. Yes. Not out, but down. Down, mm. down. Maybe 30%, 20, 30%. Oh, fuck, really? Right? That's a lot, Scott. Yeah. Did you hear that shit? Did you give up 30% of your growth because you dipped your balls in a fucking <laughs> icicle? <laughs> fuck that. Uh, it's That's interesting, right? Okay, and so it's like, well, why? 
And I think that's informative when we start thinking about the sauna. Okay, right? please continue. Because one reason at least, one reason at least, and this has been measured, there's some research out of uh, Leon Roberts, uh, Australia, um, where they've looked at like temperature, skin temperature changes, perfusion, arterial flow. There's some vasoconstriction there, right? Like when we're really cold, the uh, vascular response is to shunt flow to other regions of the body to direct it to keep our core temperature regulated. Yes, your right? body thinks it's dying of the cold, mm-hmm. and so it pulls everything into your heart, liver, kidneys, etc. And your fingers right. and your biceps, to be honest, are just like, whatever. Yeah. And some people think that that's one of the reasons why it's health promoting. We, we'll just leave that there for a second. But okay, so if it's blood flow mediated, again, go back to capillary densities with response uh, variation for hypertrophy. So if we're if we're blunting blood flow to the muscle right after the training session, and that seems to really decrease the muscle protein synthetic response, the growth response over the course of weeks. Well, what if we what if we enhanced it? Mm-hmm. Right. What if we increased blood flow by putting you into the sauna? Yeah. Right. Cause it's the opposite vasodilation. Um, and I think then you get into like, well, what is it? Brownian motion, right? Heat. It's movement. It's a movement of stuff. All, all the molecules right? and everything. Yeah. And it's like, well, are we perhaps encouraging, uh, the interaction of um ribosomes and some of those the molecular machines that are involved in instigating the initiation right of translation of those mrnas sure from heat it does make some assumptions though i will say your body's pretty good at keeping your temperature well i guess the core temperature stays about the same yeah the core temperature but the peripheral temperature even in large groups of muscles can change pretty d- pretty decently yeah. okay so okay never mind I, I you and i together refuted my stupid idea i had in my head where i was trying to be a bit cynical and saying like look like your muscles are still not fucking ice cubes when you're done training <laughs> and like how much more heat can we heat them up to by getting into a sauna i will see the huge benefit of a sauna now that i'm thinking about this i'm thinking maybe maybe we'll uh, scott we gotta install a sauna right in the gym <laughs> because bro with our gym lighting and the fucking getting out of the sauna bro if you get out of the sauna right. with like a fucking chest and tricep pump you got veins right like every fucking it's i know freaky. if for no other reason just pictures bro <laughs> right exactly man um so yeah i think those are some reasons uh but then there's an interesting class of proteins man and there is there's at least one study uh that and to be clear there's no study that i'm aware of that shows that if you do the sauna after you resist and strain for a period of weeks that you grow more muscle so a lot of folks watch this channel people get on it you you want some money hit up rp just kidding please don't do that it's not my problem, really. I don't do customer service. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, it would be fascinating to see. And it's not a hard study to do, to be honest. One group like is told to just chill in the sauna, and one group is told to chill in the sauna, except they never fucking turn it on. Or two different temperature conditions. That way you obviate mm-hmm. any psychological stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So we need to do that. Yeah. Uh, study. What about the, the pro, the pro, uh, um, what is it? Heat, heat shock, shock proteins. proteins. Yeah. yeah. The shock part really makes it shocking. I know. Right. The proteins are like, ah, yeah. It never like ceases to amaze me. Some of the names of like molecules. They're so it. funny. There's one called son of sevenless. That's so sweet. Dude. I know people who discover shit just have carte blanche to name it. <laughs> if I discovered a molecule instantly dildo molecule next, <laughs> like Mike, it's not even shaped like a dildo. I'm like, you just don't have any imagination. Anything's a dildo. If you try hard enough. Mm, uh, yeah. It's it's Scott true. says it's true. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, man. Oh man. Um, okay. But we promise your microphone that you're close to right now has never, ever been used for that function. This <laughs> several past hours for sure good to know um yeah dude so those things seem to be like molecular chaperones they seem to help proteins go where they're supposed to go now why uh god only knows i mean it's it's a little i would say misunderstood um but that seems to be their role yeah um, to a, we have this synthesized protein and heat shock proteins seem to kind of usher it to the cellular compartment that it's supposed to go to. Um, and so that's interesting. Very. 
And we have evidence that people who use the sauna, like if you take tissue, they seem to have more of those heat shock proteins. Heat. So like, I think there's at least a couple good reasons why the sauna could be an adjuvant uh, to help with promoting muscle growth alongside a potential, and I use this word carefully, detoxification. Um, there's, there, I know, I know. I use it very carefully. Cue um, hipsters. I know. Um, but there is evidence that in sweat, right, you find things that are probably not great for us to be present in our bodies. Now, of course, toxic load makes a difference, sure. right? Exposure. And but so clearance on. can be a cool thing. Right. And it's, you're chilling. It's not like we're talking about... That's so important. Right? The RP Hypertrophy app comes with dozens of pre-made programs from two days of training per week all the way up to six days of training with specialized programs included for shoulders, arms, chest, back, legs, abs, and glutes, each one with male and female options. You get them all and can use them as often as you like, even building off of them to make your own customized versions for only about a dollar a day. Click on the link in the description of this video to get started. So as long as you're psychologically comfortable in a sauna, what my personal recommendation, if you want to try this out at home, let me know if you think this is decent. If you have access to a sauna, like, you know, a lot of people have sauna access in their gym. After you finish a hard session, get your carb, protein, fluid, and electrolyte shake, bring it in with you, sip on your shake, and chill in there for 5, 10, 20 maybe minutes or something like that. and really make sure you're in a posture that's relaxed. And if you just hate being exposed to heat, probably not good for the stress response, but if you can just chill, maybe get some headphones going or something like that, it might be worth a try to see if it has some kind of beneficial effects because the, um, kind of peripheral reasoning is starting to get interesting. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah. Well, and there's some recovery data like on it where in general subjective recovery scores um soreness those sorts of things um sense of you know perceived recovery seems to just be better if you use the sauna interesting and like when you compare the the potential negative effects from cold plunging from the body of literature on that yes. to the uh potential negative effects of sauna it's kind of Polarized, almost. polarized opposite. My only reservation was twofold. One, no direct data and like, you know, don't put your faith into this just yet. I'm not installing a sauna in my gym just yet, but it was like three or four well-controlled studies and making more jacked. I'm putting a fucking sauna in the ASAP. Um, my only reservation is um, your body absolutely adores comfort and homeostasis. Hmm. And after massive homeostatic disruption, that is training I have good reason to believe that the next thing you want to do is be as comfortable as possible and maybe accessions into both low heat, high cold and high heat environments are maybe both different versions of the wrong answer. It's kind of like asking a person like, do you want to spend the next 12 hours in total fucking silence with no one talks to you or is even around? Or do you want people yelling at you? Like, can I get just people like coffee shop ambiance or like, no, nah. but that's what most people like best. Mm -hmm. That's my only reservation. I will say like if heat exposure and saunas turn out to magnify the growth response, Scott, we're turning the gym up to fucking 90. You already do, man. Shut up. <laughs> and that, I mean, that's, you know, even like. Doing a few minutes before a session sometimes. I like to do that, dude, just to warm, warm up. up right? That's a great warm up. Right? It accomplishes the warming for you. Mm -hmm. um, I will say for folks who get carried away by my 90 degree gym comment, don't do that. <laughs> there is compelling reason not to train in a high heat environment. Your performance will go down like crazy. Uh, Jared Feather and I travel around the world doing seminars and stuff a little bit. And um, him and I have had some sessions in Australia and in Thailand mm -hmm. where we both look at each other and we're like, we have 30 minutes to crush quads until we can't do anything anymore because there's just not that many fluids in the world to put back into your body. Mm -hmm. Just excessively high heat yeah. does not work a from a point. performance perspective. Mm -hmm. But if you can do the high heat just before for warming up or the high heat just after for uh, that extra boost for growth, maybe then there's something to it. Another thing really quick. What do you think about this? The internal temperature 
of your working muscles while you train is way higher than baseline. Is that part of the hypertrophic signaling cascade? Hmm. My biceps get hotter when I train them. Is that part of what makes them grow? Or do we just not know enough? Because heat shock proteins, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, and I would say that's one of the... And um, Dr. Quindry, who's at the University of Montana, has... I remember he he had some done some work on on this, um, at least taught us an advanced exercise physiology too at Auburn. I remember we had a whole section on this. Um, and my understanding is that exercise in general tends to increase the abundance of heat shock proteins. And like if you, if we had a group of 100 sedentary individuals and 100 people who, you know, had exercised for years and we pulled muscle tissue and we just looked at how many heat shock proteins were present. Even at baseline. Yeah, just cross-sectional analysis oh. on that. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. <sighs> That's trippy. All right, so TLDR, give the sauna a look, but the cold plunge, you got to drink that shit because it's not going <laughs> to help you out.